Game is dependent on female sexual dominance. This dominance translates to all areas of male endeavor. It is a stifling, backwards, wasteful expenditure of male vitality. In any area where the practice of it arises from natural conditions and social pressures, you will see the same associative symptoms of the pathology that causes game, which as I've said already is a female sexual dominance over men. Simply put, when male excellence is at a standstill and females have some access to some external source of sustenance or advantage over men, you will see game arise, since game at its core is a prolonged game of cutthroat amongst men for access to females. Now when the state bankrolled female dominance over men in poor urban areas via welfare and other subsidies, the males, since they were essentially strong-armed into equal economic status, were forced to find other ways to differentiate themselves to women. And this is when male competition, the driving force of civilization, makes the transition from healthy, healthy male versus male competition to oftentimes ultra-violent, economically destructive, poverty-inducing, gynocentric male versus male competition. Now, I remember in the early 90s when you used to hear a lot about the epidemic of black-on-black -black crime in the areas where game first arose. But I always knew that turned to be inaccurate, not because it wasn't happening, but because the root cause of this violence was never examined. What I mean to say is this. You can take any community of men and women, regardless of race or any other distinctions, and artificially induce male economic poverty, or at the least, economic equality across the board. In this case, we saw it happen via the crack epidemic and women's welfare programs. Then, if you give the women even the slightest amount of advantage economically over the men, which is exactly what a welfare check is, you will see the men especially turn against each other, and violence will not be black on black, but male on male. I challenge anybody to pull up the statistics and see how much male on female violence compromised the total amount of violence during the epidemic of so-called black on black violence. What happened exactly? Women were encouraged to remove the fathers from the household in order to gain access to government welfare. The men were then blamed for the fatherlessness that ensued, and the rest that followed was drugs, poverty, and violent competition for females. In other words, this black-on-black -black crime wave was nothing more than a massive expenditure of male life and energy in hopes of re-establishing status and wealth for access to women after external, artificially induced conditions were implemented, resulting in an economic reset button push on the men. It is fought first through false bravado, hypermasculinity, and posturing, and unfortunately as this marathon of one-upsmanship approaches a tipping point, the simple appearance of this skewed form of masculinity simply will not suffice. No, there has to be blood because the women are always watching. Always, and the slightest challenge from one male to another can escalate since this farce has to be kept up. You see, this is far from a racial issue. It's just what will happen in some form or another when the price of pussy is inflated to a degree that it can be leveraged against men, who will then go about destroying each other, both figuratively and literally depending on the amount of collective desperation from the population of males in question. This is the essence of game. Males, which resemble each other economically, employing techniques to differentiate themselves for their own selfish needs. It's the study of the inner workings of unhealthy male versus male competition. If this competition is defined as being any competition that doesn't have a net positive result for both the winners and the losers. To test my theory, ask yourself this. If you were to take two men that implement game with equal frequency and talent, exactly equal in all ways other than the fact that one makes double the amount of money than the other. Which one will these females choose every time? I think you know the answer. Game is predatory male-on-male -male competition, nothing else. Now, I read about an experiment that was conducted on male desirability in regards to the lions of Africa that I've put in a link. It turns out that lions are the only felines that grow manes, and it was believed that a male lion's mane was actually some sort of display of status and virility. So to test this, four different stuffed lions were set up in different locations and hyena sounds were played to attract both male and female lions to the stuffed dummy male lions. And it was found that females had almost an exclusive preference for the dummies with black colored manes and that male lions would attack the lighter maned lions, leaving the dark maned lions in peace. Further studies on the health and virility of these darker maned lions also proved them to be the superior specimens of their species in almost all regards the true alpha males of their species. Now, these dark mane lions are not the feline equivalent of PUAs and those that practice game. No, if the light mane lions were to find a coal mine and started rubbing their manes in it to give the illusion of dark manes, then they would be the PUAs of their species. 
If these lions then started attacking their still light mane counterparts, they would resemble PUAs even more. Because what PUAs are is, according to their own terminology, a bunch of beta men masquerading as alpha males. They will never be the dark mane lions, only an imitation of one that is clever enough to fool the females they wish to court. And that's why they turn their hatred onto other so-called beta men because they hate to be reminded of what they actually are. They hate men that stopped caring about female definitions of beta and alpha a long time ago. And make no mistake about it, these terms, beta and alpha, are terms that are defined by the females that PUAs court. They have no control or say over it. Game is, and always has been, female supplication and submission. See, PUAs attempt to convince you that after studying what women actually want, as opposed to what they say they want, that game isn't about, and solely about, giving females what they want, regardless of what they say they want. I'm going to say that again. PUAs attempt to convince you that after studying what women actually want, as opposed to what they say they want, that game isn't about, and solely about, giving females what they want, regardless of what they say they want. What then do I define as healthy male competition exactly? Well, these are competitions that require real, tangible, and applicable talent. Competition that furthers understanding in areas of real importance. Competition that creates wealth. Competition that furthers science. Competition in which male human athleticism is pushed to higher and higher limits. Once again, we're talking about healthy male competition with a net gain for all those participating in it. When Michael Jordan, who was arguably the best athlete of all time, graced the courts of the NBA, we saw a quality of male basketball players emerge, the likes of which have never been reproduced since. The best of the best. And I don't want to hear any LeBron and Kobe nonsense. These were the best of the best. The Magic Johnsons, the Olajuwans, and the Robinsons. And they existed because Jordan, the best of the best, created such a climate of excellence that all the others were forced to compete that much more furthering their own excellence in the process. Scientific discovery is derived from healthy male versus male competition. When Niels Bohr and Einstein were battling it out for the acceptance of quantum mechanics, the fervor in which these two heavyweights were taking shots at each other is the stuff of legend, but what differentiates this form of competition between that of game is that there exists an end result. Something is produced. Society is rewarded with something as a result of this conflict. Our understanding of science was furthered, and in, but in game, the only thing produced was a sex act. Nothing of importance other than a possible pregnancy for the vultures in child support courts to live off of. When a civilization is in decline, you will see the practice of game exponentially rise, since male ambition and talent is funneled away from avenues of productivity and is instead squandered on an animalistic mating ritual that is typical of the female-based herd breeding model. What game does is it acknowledges female competition for alpha males. But what is an alpha male? Let me tell you right off the bat that no matter what PUAs or the proponents of game will tell you, an alpha male is in the purest sense dictated and defined by the general consensus of women in regards to what makes a man sexually attractive. Nothing else. An alpha male, according to the principles of game, is any man that is sexually attractive to large amounts of women. That is the only requirement according to game literature. Trust me, they'll try to tell you otherwise, but in the purest sense, it is their definition of the term. And so, what women define or classify as an alpha male is what they attempt to emulate. Because game is reactionary, it is a reflection of and a reaction to female power. And those that practice it will often mask this capitulation by insinuating that game is an attempt at understanding and thus eventually controlling female psychology. And that statement certainly has a degree of truth to it, but what they hide is the end game of this game. The question that needs to be asked is whether or not female psychology is worth scrutiny and whether or not there are suitable rewards to be garnered in controlling it. What are men as a collective getting out of it? The juice isn't worth the squeeze. Men figured this out a long time ago and set their sights on decoding and understanding the forces of nature and civilization as we know it was the payoff. Any culture country or nation in which the main area of male expertise is female courtship will crumble in on itself. Implosion is the only possible fate awaiting those that put too much emphasis on the female psyche. Game is a symptom of an addiction to the allure of women. This allure is biological. Men are predisposed to like women, thus there can be either a frenetic mad dash to bask in the allure of women, 
or an attempt from men to escape their biology, and in this regard, females are way ahead of us. Any legitimate discussion from men in terms of exploring ways of surmounting and escaping their biological mandate and compulsions is deemed by PUAs and feminists alike as something to be shamed and ridiculed. Beta behavior, if we were using PUA syntax. Men going their own way is the first attempt at such a thing, but somewhere, someday, some beta scientist will break the female monopoly on breeding. That's a matter of course, not if, but when. This will be the point in which equality between the genders will be achieved. This is the point in which men will surpass their last and final female dependency. But as of now, the majority of men are quite content to surrender to their biological dependencies. And if you look at the behavior of women, if you look at the behavior of women, however, you see that they have a consistent, sustained record of demanding from society that they not be considered slaves to their biology. We see over and over how fervently females fight being controlled by their biology through sperm banks, through restricting the possibility of a father to conduct a paternity test, through birth control, through abortion for their convenience. Women fight to eliminate the negative consequences of their biological compulsions, and men fight amongst themselves to convince women to let them indulge in theirs as much as possible. The PUAs are simply a band of manginas that finally learn how to get laid, and I say this with quite a bit of skepticism since I'm deeply suspicious of just how much these people actually are getting laid. But pay attention to their behavior and you'll see it yourself. They do what they believe women like because they think it will get them laid, just like manginas and white knights and male feminists who bash other men thinking it will get them laid. The only difference is that they may have actually gotten laid in the process. They still denigrate other men in hopes of appearing to be better to the women that they are dependent on. The term beta male is the equivalent of being called a misogynist by a male feminist. It's a separative term designed to show women who has what they want and who doesn't. Such a group of people, and this is my opinion, I'm not speaking for anybody else, but the fact that these group of men, a bunch of vagina dependents, have no business interjecting themselves into men's issues of actual importance. And I don't understand why these people aren't recognized as the clowns that they are. Now I want to make it clear for everyone listening the exact contribution to male freedom that PUAs have made. That being absolute zero. Nothing at all. You want to get laid as often as possible, then that's your business. But when PUAs claim that they're doing something for male freedom, specifically when they've created an entire syntax dedicated to bashing men that don't get laid as much as they supposedly say they do, I have to call bullshit. And that's really all I gotta say on the subject.